Great to have you here on Unfiltered. Grant Napier and Sean Svalsbury. And hey, Sean, man, wow. I mean, Antonio Brown, two others, Mike Edwards. Uh, you know, Antonio Brown is so damn frustrating. I know you're shaking your head. I'm shaking my head. Uh, suspended for three games without pay. This was a joint decision by the NFL and the NFL Players Association, meaning the Players Association fully backed up the NFL on this. I don't even know what to say, Sean. I, I really don't other than, and again, I, I'm not, you know, putting Mike Edwards and and, and, the, and Franklin, who was waived in the fall, on the back burner, Sean. But Antonio Brown, it's just one thing after another with him. This is just, what do you say other than you shake your head? I'm looking at you. I'm looking at your expression. You don't even have to say anything. Your expression to me says it all. Yeah, listen, you hear teammates like Tom Brady, people go to bat for him and rave about him, right, as a teammate. I'm sure – I've never, I, I, I take it back. At the Super Bowl, I'll meet him. He's always been good to me, Grant, always has. He's been cordial. He's always been kind. I remember I had him and Le'Veon Bell when they were in Pittsburgh sitting at a table in person doing an interview with them, and they were fantastic. We had a blast. It's a handful of years ago. And so I, I, I don't try to – I judge people on – each, like, I don't judge somebody else for something they did 10 years ago. We'll take care of that. You know, on, on each end, compartmentalize, right? I want to, I, I do, I like the guy. But, Grant, it's just, it's always something. Now, I don't know what he said. I think this came down in the last hour or whatever it is, the, the suspension. And I, I, I'll be honest, man, it's, I, I can't, I don't know what he said or if he's even addressed it yet, but my guess is, what, what, what excuse is it going to be this time, that he didn't know that they were making a fake, uh, a fake vaccination card. Listen, right. it's well. I'm not here, and you know this for a fact. I don't give a shit if you're vaccinated or not. That's your business. I'm not. I, I, I'm not deciding that for you. Nor am I going to resist you from coming into my home if you are or aren't, and all that stuff. That's everybody gets their chance to decide that shit on their own. I come from a different. I'm, not, I'm just. I'm one of those guys that I, I, I love people, and I'm going to support them through mistakes or good times. But this is just. Are you shocked? I, honestly, are, are you shocked? If there was a guy, I mean, to try and pull this, here's why it bothers me, premeditated. You had to plan this and calculate this, go through it and literally think I'm going to beat the system. Like when you see in a movie in a Tom Cruise Mission Impossible and they're making a fake passport. You know what I'm saying? And taping it on there and you paid some dude to do it. I and mean, this is right out of a, of a, of a fucking movie. But you know what? he probably got off easy. Three games and no play. The truth is he probably got off easy because if you're going to tell me NFL, Players Association, Society, the president, the press secretary, Dr. Tony Fauci, how oh, all the stuff they tell us and we're supposed to take it serious, then it would seem like faking a passport like that under these mandates. I'm not judging. Him. Like, Listen, you do what you want to do, but when you're trying to beat the system like that, and it, it, isn't it the same as when the doctor's here and you got a guy holding the pee cup for you and he's peed in it and you try to pull that? And then so you, I mean, yet at least the pee cup, the steroids are on you or the PEDs. This is on you've disrespected teammates. You try to beat, which tells me obviously he didn't want to get vaccinated, which that part's up to him. But tell us that or don't tell us that and go about your business and deal with your teammate. But the fake vaccination card, it just, it, it feels dirty to me, man. I know. Hey, you just said a key word, disrespected his teammates. He did that in Pittsburgh. He basically let down the other members in that locker room. He went to Oakland, and it was a fucking disaster. I mean, it was just a circus, not giving a shit about his responsibility to the organization that had given him a ton of money. He let down every teammate in that organization. Right? I mean, I mean and, and at some point, you know, you could speak to this better than I could. You know, football is such a, I think more than other sports, it is such a team element. It is because you have so many guys on a team. And I I just would personally, if I can't count on the guy next to me, that, that's a real problem. And I just don't know how anyone can count on Antonio Brown because of his track record. And here we are again, as when they say the NFL season begins at Thanksgiving. Well, that's in the rearview mirror. Now you're getting into the, the real crunch of everything. And he's basically let down every member of that organization. And it doesn't seem like he gives a shit because he does it everywhere he goes. Right, and it's not even the judgment part of it. It's just fact. I try to cut him as much as I do, Grant. I, I do everything I think. Well, you know, if he gets around somebody, and I, I understand people go through 
whether it's, you know, they're going through some, some physical, mental, emotional tra trauma or times in their life, like he's, as we've talked about in the past, when, you know, some of the, like when he does those nights when he used to be on Twitter and just going, you know, haywire on Twitter, on social media. And then you have your quarterback that's gone to bat for you in two different cities, wants you there, right? And, and, and he's counting on you. And you're, and it just, it's so, listen, I just as soon had him, if this is the case, and he didn't want to get vaccinated, and then he, then he, you had COVID and had to miss. At least we can, if people want to criticize you, criticize you that you just stood strong for some and you didn't want to be vaccinated and you you went all double whammy. You didn't want to get vaccinated, which is your choice, but you got teammates and there's collateral damage there too. And then you threw the old fake vaccination card. So you didn't just lose 10 days or not a few false uh, tests that you have to pass. You've lost three games. You, you, I hope it was worth the pay because you ain't getting paid now for three of them. And this is a stretch run. Then you say, how many times can somebody go to bat for somebody before you finally just say, dude, either help yourself, I can't keep doing it. And I'm bummed because you know what? He is as dynamic a receiver when he's right as we – I mean, he's a Hall of Famer. He's had a Hall of Fame career, but he's going to come up shy, you watch, because of all this. He's not, not going to get there. And they actually need his playmaking skills. And uh, it's just I don't know who goes home and says, no, I don't need to beat the system. Let's fake the Vax card. As if these people haven't seen this movie before. They're, they're there to look for every, look at everything. You can't fool them, man. You might as well try to fool a lie detector test. What happened? A lot of people in now were talking about, well, why did Aaron Rodgers, why did nothing happen to him? What Aaron did was he deceived the media. You could say he lied to the media. He didn't violate the NFL protocols. That's the big difference here. So, you know, people are trying to tie, well, gee, how come Aaron Rodgers got off scot-free? Well, he didn't get off scot-free in, in, in the uh, uh, court of public opinion. He got destroyed by a lot of people. He's still getting hammered for it. Yes, but he didn't violate the NFL COVID protocol. He, he what he did was he he deceived or you could say lied to the media. That's what he did. Right, and you know what? He's not the first one. Uh, you turn on your po politics show every day, and you'll find on TV them lying to me all the time. Right? Hey, I always wear a mask, and they walk up. They got a mask on. I, you know, we can go through all. I don't know. I don't care, Republican, Democrat. Uh, it, they're full of shit a lot of times. Right? In this exactly. case. I, I don't want to hear the race card played over this. I, I don't. That, well, Aaron got off. To, I mean, no. If Aaron Rodgers would have done the same thing and fooled on a vax card and tried to turn it in and lied about it, had somebody make him a fake vaccination card, then he should have been hammered more than he is. People in public opinion are still hammering him over, over that media, and some media will be offended forever and can't stand him for it. I mean, listen. He, he did mislead, and he deceived. He was very coy about it, and he always is about his stuff. But this is apples to oranges. There's no comparison to what they did. Because, one, talking about it or not talking about it or making us think you did it compared to flat-ass trying to fool people premeditated and putting the guy together and paying him money to fix it for you. I'm assuming he paid the guy to give him a fake vote, unless the guy is a buddy and did it for free. To me, I just don't know. And I know we're leaving the other guys out, but we always do that. The, the bigger star usually gets more of the right. of the of the brunt. I just, I mean, I, I I don't get it. But then again, we've all done stupid stuff. But this is when you're going through the process. What clicks in to say, "Hey, man, you, you, there's a real good chance this isn't going to fly." Right. Oh yeah, we ain't like we're not walking through TSA, dude. You know what? <laughs> These guys look really serious and health. It's just it's it's. Blatantly disrespectful to your teammates. It just is, and your and the, the whole organization. All right, let's talk about the game tonight. You got Dallas, who's lost three or four. They're not playing well. New Orleans has got a ton of injuries. The game's in New Orleans. If you and I are talking in the morning, I will be. I don't know if I'll be shocked. I'll be very surprised if Dallas doesn't win this game and win this game comfortably. If the Dallas Cowboys don't win this, you can stick a Super Bowl fork in them. They may still go, but it'll prove to me that. That they're they they're the Dallas Cowboys over the last decade or plus. I love. Listen, he said advantage Cowboys. What's what's the spread? Six points, six and a half. I mean, they're less than a touchdown. Now I understand when it's in New Orleans. I get it. Taysom Hill is going to start. They are so limited. If you squeeze them, listen. Just take one part away from Taysom Hill. If I if Taysom Hill can go throw for three twenty and beat me. And without Alvin Kamara on the field, then you know what? The Dallas Cowboys are piss poor. Yep. I can't imagine it. It seems like such a maybe that's what scared it. It seems so like such a safe bet, right? The Cowboys, listen, don't don't jack around, run the football, play action, put the ball in Dak's hands. 
uh, make them one-dimensional on offense. And really, the Saints, their bell cow most of the year has been their defense, right, uh, um, uh, Grant? And But the problem is, is that the last three or four weeks, their de- while well, their defense has gone in the tank, like you look at the Chiefs, their defense has started to carry their weight. So you're looking at this, then if the Saints lose this one, you know, they're sitting in the 10 hole, I think, right now, playoff wise. They'll be in a major chase mode and not look any better because Taysom Hill, while I love his game all around, yep. I'm not real scared that he's going to destroy me. But the Dallas defense will have their work cut out for him because of his versatility. I wouldn't bet New Orleans in this game, no matter how much you told me that they're going to win. The Cowboys, this is such a huge game for both. The Cowboys have to win this, or you, I, I'll kind of blow them off as just being just being another team instead of a elite team. All right, we got a huge day on Saturday, so let's talk some college football. Why don't we start with top ranked Georgia, third ranked Alabama? Uh, it came out today that uh, Alabama may be without three key starters: their running back Robinson, who's third best in the conference, their starting center, which to me is huge and a starting safety. If those three don't play, I don't think Alabama's going to win even if they all play. I think Georgia, they are ripe for this. They've been waiting for this. I mean, Kirby Smart, uh, his nemesis is on the field Saturday. They're a better football team than Alabama. There's no excuse for Georgia not to win this game. Alabama's won, you know, they've won a whole bunch of games, lost one, but they've won a ton of games this year. They haven't looked as pretty doing it as they normally do or as smooth. A couple things concern me about this, and I've seen Bill O'Brien's movie before. Will he play not to lose because it's Georgia's defense? Let's play it close to the vest and hang around, which is a mistake. You got to beat them. You got to be just as aggressive on offense as they are on defense. Because I'm going to tell you, they will knock the piss right out of you. They are. <laughs> they'll knock your dick in the dirt, brother. They are. They, have, they are. As a matter of fact, I watch them and I cringe for the guys watching that defense run on uh, 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 at Georgia. But, but they also have to face Bryce Young this year. He's right. a good player. So and listen, it's when you're when you're coaching against your former boss, it, and you know that hovers over. It's tough. It, it is tough as hell. I don't want Kirby Smart to go into the okay. This is yes because they should be cut loose even more. They're in no matter what. That's right. That, that's, that's right. Clear. Well, that's if you right. want a really loud message to a punch to the throat, yep. let it let it go, man. Put go there and send a message that if you do beat them twenty one to three or. 37 to 10 that the message is even louder going into the cha- going into the championship you're like these nobody's got a chance against us so forget playing it safe now Alabama I, I got to see if I can get their their most defi- they, they can't play if they play like they did against Auburn last week other than the last drive and the two minute uh, two, two they're going to get boat raced so right. but I'll tell you this Grant six and a half points five times since 2008 Nick Saban has been dogs, and like three of them have been to the dogs, right? Right. And the total points, you know, he's, he's lost one of them, and when he's a, a, a underdog like this and won four of them since 2008, the point differential in those four wins and on all five games is like 175 to uh, to like 60 or 70 or eight. They've doubled up. So when they beat you in an underdog, they don't just beat you. They friggin' hammer you. I believe George is the better team. Now, the question is, I know what both strengths are. Georgia's strength is better than Alabama's strength. Their defense better than Alabama's offense right now, and especially with Robinson and the injuries. Georgia's offense has been efficient, not explosive, but they, they make enough plays. The question is, can, can Alabama's defense get off the damn field? Can, can you get off the damn field, maybe steal a series by a, a short field? Because you're going to need a few short fields. If you think you're going 88 or 98 yards against this team all, all game long, not you got to I'm going to tell you, though, Grant, I don't know if I'll bet this game, (laughs) but do I really believe George is going to beat a Nick Saban team by more than a touchdown? Six and a half? Do do, do you believe it? Do you you, you believe You know what? Honestly, I would always say no, but I've watched Alabama play every game this year. They just don't look impressive to me, and I know that I should never discount Nick Saban and what he does in big games, as you pointed out, when, when he's an underdog. I just don't see Alabama staying in this game. So, well, in my opinion, what I've seen, I think Georgia will cover in this game. I really do. Yeah, but to turn it on and on, I mean, we could say all we want about Nick Saban. He ain't making one tackle or one throw, right? And Bill O'Brien's, a big, like I said, Bill O'Brien's a big key. Are you gonna Are you gonna play it because that's the way we do it? We line up and win seventeen fourteen. I'll tell you this: 
If the game for the winner is under 20 in the teens, Alabama ain't winning. Right. Now, you keep an eye on that. If all of a sudden they steal a few possessions yeah. and the score starts to creep towards 30, meaning – they, that Alabama scored and gets it like they get they score 17 points in the first half. Look out because I believe that a score that gets closer to 30 favors Alabama. I believe a score that hovers in the teens or in the low 20s or 20 all George all hell. If it's 17, it could be said they could pitch a shutout the way those damn guys play. Yep. And they should be so fired up, Georgia, to send this loud message. Like I said, what do they got to lose but a game? They're not going home. Now, Michigan, they lose. Michigan's done. Houston, I mean, Cincinnati, done. I mean, we, we can go. Everybody else is done. Other than these cats, they, it's a luxury game. Now, they don't look at it like that. They want to go undefeated and send the loudest message. But you have no reason to feel uptight. You're a better team, and you're in a primo situation. They should physically wear Alabama out. But I don't think it's a 31 to 10 game. I think it's closer than that. We don't ever talk about this. Well, we don't talk about this enough. But I think a real key in this game is special teams and punting. Because I'll tell you, if Alabama has to go, as you said, if, if, if they have, you know, bad field position against that Georgia defense, they're not going to have the sustained drives that they're accustomed to. And I got to tell you, you know, you talk about Georgia and their punting game. If they can hem Alabama in a couple times, that shifts the field. Again, I really believe that's a key in this game because I'm with you. I don't see Alabama having long, sustained drives against this defense. I just don't. They're going to have to have some, like a slap route where a guy misses a tackle and he runs out the back door. They're going to have to have a field flipper the other way where they punt down to the five. They happen to go three and out. They punt, you get it at midfield. I'm not, I'm part of that key, and I'm with you 100%. And Mike Tice, the great, you know, my teammate in Minnesota and Seattle, and the coach of Vikings, great one line. He was a Chuck Knox guy, and they have these one liners. And Mike always used to stay in the locker room before every game of all the years that I've known. Special teams be special. He said it all the time. And what he was saying is that was his habit and routine, but meaning, block me a punt, flip field position. Because it was going to be paramount for Alabama not to come out of their back end. Because you may see a safety if you're putting out of your own end zone. And keep an eye on average starting field position in this game, Grant. If we're looking at, hey, Alabama started at their 17-yard line and Georgia's at their 47, 48, they, get, they don't have to do much. They, they don't have to do much. It, it could be, listen, you better have a good supply of body bags, Alabama, if you decide to play like you did a couple times this year. Because George is going to, they'll, they'll hand deliver them to your ass. They are nasty. So we'll see. I'm anxious. We got the Heisman Trophy front runner against the best defense in the world collegiately right now. Let, let's see what, let's see what Alabama's got finally when they go to game and people are kind of snickering like they got no shot. We'll see. We'll see. I love, I love coach talk. I, I interviewed uh, Sean Payton up in Lake Tahoe a couple of years ago and we were talking about. Uh, in the early 2000s when the Giants played the Vikings uh, in the NFC Championship game and the Giants won 41 to nothing. But before the game, the Giants defensive coordinator, John Fox, was telling Peyton, he goes, listen, all you need to do is score 10 points in the first half, and I think we're going to win this game. I'm really I'm really confident with our game plan. Well, the score, the score at halftime was 31 nothing, and Sean Payton tells the story as they're walking out of the locker room. They're coming out onto the field to start the second half, and Fox is like a couple steps ahead of him. And he runs, runs up to him, and goes, "Hey, John, fucking thirty-one points good enough for you?" <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I mean, I love, I, I love, I love coach talk, man. It's good. Okay, stuff. You would make both. Have, have I, I, the classic, and Foxy's one of the all-time greats, and I love that. Yeah. Are you? Right. Have I ever shared my Jerry Burns story with you? No. Yeah, Burnsy. He was at Notre you know, Dame. Looks like the Burgess Meredith, right? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I mean this, God rest his soul, one of the greatest, like Chuck, I love the old school guys. That put, they, they let the players police it, everything. And Bernsey, and I got guys that know how to do this, and Bernsey like used the word, and I'm allowed to cuss on this, so, and I don't mean it disrespectful, I mean it affectionate, right? Yeah. Bernsey said fuck like you and I would say, how you doing? <laughs> and you know, one of our players, I'll leave his name out, and he wouldn't care because he's oh, priceless. He would check mark one, two, three, four, line through. In a team meeting, how many times Burns? He would say, fuck. <laughs> and so one time he looks at me over his shoulder and goes, Sean. And we listened to him, but we loved it because Burns, he was that old school. He was fucking a great – he'd keep a veteran over a third-round pick if he liked the veteran because he just loved veteran football players, right? 
And so, and I got a million Bernsey stories, but he leans on my shoulder. My buddy does it with Sean. He's 64 times in like in a 10 minute meeting. Then Bernsey was like, and I mean, he looks like Burgess Meredith, right? And Ber Bernsey, like a, he'll wear yellow pants and like a well, purple shirt. That fucking price. I mean, it, I, I'm talking about beloved, right? right? And a great football mind. Fuck, the guy was awesome. If you let me just preface this, it, when you get done with this, go to YouTube and say Bernsey, Bob Schnelker. Um, press conference, okay. dude, and you say, oh, yeah, hey, we, ha we had him where we want him, and we let him off the hook. This is better than, this is like Hal McRae times five, right? Fuck, it's priceless. So, Benzie, we're getting ready to play a game. It's his last year before, and they're talking about who they're going to replace him. We were struggling. He would call our million-dollar players the big knockers. That's what he called them, meaning you're the man, the big knocker, you're the big stud. I, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, the reason I studied, that's how Bernsey talked, right? He'd be like, hey, yeah, 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 fucking big knockers. Hey, yeah, 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 fuck it, yeah, fuck, fuck. And that's, so he'd do that, right? So we get ready to play a game, and he comes in the room, the, the, like on our Wednesday or Monday after a game, because he goes, hey, we had Keith Millard, Chris Dolman, oh, wow. John Randall, Scott Studwell, uh, uh, Anthony Carter, Wade Wilson, you know, I'm telling you, we had, well, we had five Hall of Famers on that team. Then the next year, when we get in, like, Chris Carter, a few years, we were loaded, right? But these guys had some aging veterans, but were really good. Kirk Loudermilk, Gary Zimmerman, Randall McDaniel, fuck, dude, everywhere you look, the quarterback, I must have sucked a lot because we had some really good players, right? So, as he comes walking in, and he gets up, he goes, a fucking, a fucking media and these fucking cocksuckers, they have, He's fucking cocksucker. He loves saying cocksucker, dude. He was great. He was great. And I mean this affection. I have to offend anybody. Don't let your kids listen to this. But you have to, if people that are from there and see it know that this is him. And fuck, Bernsey, he had, didn't gain a pound. Bernsey looked the same for 25 years, right? Friggin' I would have ran through a wall, jumped over it. I've got anything for the guy. And so you know, if, if, the fucking media and the fucking fans, and they, 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 they fucking think you guys, because we got our ass kicked. He goes, they fucking think you, you, you fucking big knockers. They, 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 they fuck think you're old and they fucking think you're slow well fuck those guys we'll fucking fight them in the parking lot they they the fucking cocksuckers i fucking tell you you big knockers we're gonna fucking fix it this week and i fucking guarantee fucking to you i i i, I fuck and, I, and, and make no mistake about that this is another one he goes and i fucking make, make make no mistake about that he'd love to say make no mistake about that they fucking cocksuckers make no mistake about that so we go that week go play the game get our ass kicked again Bernsey comes walking into the video he gives and we're winding down the season, and we were too good not to be winning winning divisions, right? And which we did a lot of times. And Bernsey comes in, he goes, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. fuck, this fucking media. I told you fucking cocksuckers. I said, these fucking cocksuckers, they, they don't know what we're doing here, but these fucking cocksuckers, you big knockers, they say you're old, and, 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 and fuck, they say you're slow. And, and he kind of hesitates. He goes, yeah, you know what? Fuck, 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 fuck I believe them. And, dude, it was – you, you wanted to say, damn, we got to ask if you're embarrassed. But he wanted to smile because it was just so, I, 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 fuck, I believe him. Meaning we're slow and we're getting old and we ain't performing. Dude, it was, wow. dude, he was, the, the, he, he, we were down the field and he'd be saying, like, I remember Wade Wilson, God rest his soul. We were on there. Bernsey liked to have fun too. So we had our new indoor facility and a couple of the players and some general manager were standing up there overlooking the, the railing watching indoor practice. And Bernsey comes up to Wade Wilson and he goes, hey, 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 fucking wait. Hey, fuck, 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 fucking whiskey. We call Wade whiskey. He goes, hey, fucking whiskey. Hey, hey, hey. Run that fucking play where, 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 fucking, where you fucking throw the ball to AC. Do me, whatever play that was, just throw the ball to AC. He goes, but, but, but I also want you to do me a favor. I said, fucking, when you drop that wheel and fucking whiz one up there by those guys and hit them. This is the middle of practice. We're a team drill. Wade drops back and throws a fucking dart right up into the railing. And everybody's crying, laughing. I mean, he, that, those days, and he was a serious football guy. But go, I, Grant, I'm telling you, you will text me when this show is over after you go listen. It's about a seven-minute rant. I, I fucking, fucking Bob Stelker's my offensive coordinator. Make no fucking mistake about that. And I, 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 fuck, it's not his fault. Rick, the, 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 the fucking Alfred Anderson fucking tripped over his own foot. And so as long as I'm the fucking head coach here, Bob Stelker will be my fucking offensive coordinator. And I'm not, dude, I'm just, and he'll say it in the press, that you've got to listen to the uncut version. And I, Bernsey, I, I, I don't like him. I friggin' love him. But there's guys that can do his pers impersonation. I'm not as good as others, but priceless, dude. You're you're absolutely killing me. I'm I'm getting it ready right now so I don't forget. Uh, that that's a freaking amazing story. Uh, oh, he he's, he's so beloved. It's phenomenal, phenomenal. Yeah, uh, fucking guy, fucking cocksuckers. Yeah, y'all was classic.
Classic. Oh, my God. All right. Uh, back to the fucking games on Saturday. Uh, <laughs> do, you think, do you think Baylor, Oklahoma State could be the best game of the weekend? I do. Both. Well, whenever I say Oklahoma State in the past, what comes to mind, Grant? I say Oklahoma State. You think offense, right? Gundy. Yeah. Fuck, Gundy's, you tell me Gundy's not a hell of a coach. How long he's been doing it, getting nine and ten wins there. But what always lets him down is either a couple bad plays in a game or defense, right? They get outscored. We Grant, the over-unders in its 40s. Big 12 game in the 40s, right? Yeah, that, that's and, and, unbelievable to me. Yeah, yeah. Like Art Browse and that was there, and, and, and Matt Rule is offense all, and Mike Gundy. Now we've got a team that the bell cow for both, defense with Dave Aranda, and Oklahoma State's playing nasty-ass defense. They are. Now it comes to come down to some big play. Um, do you get a stop and a turnover, a low scoring, and still big 12. They may score 55 points, but – I love this game because I love Oklahoma State and, and Baylor's defense, and I can't wait to watch it. I think this is a, I think this is going to be highly entertaining. And if Oklahoma State wins this game and beats Baylor, they're the fourth best team in the country. Make no yep. make no fucking mistake about that. Make make no fucking mistake about okay. that. Speaking <laughs> of that, okay, because you know, uh, I think it's only appropriate that we let people uh, listen to. Back. I mean, I mean, shit, uh, 23 bucks, if you can get more excitement than that, uh, hell, you're in the wrong uh, operation. A hell, of a, a hell of a game. And I'm going to say something. As long as I'm in this fucking job, Snelker will be the offensive coach. I mean, no, no question talking about that. No, no, no fucking question about that. Now, we, uh, I don't like to name names after a fucking, after a fucking game. But we, we can't. We can't be responsible for the blocking. We can't be responsible for the fucking guys jumping outside. We can't be responsible for a fuck. We get down there and and, uh, and it was a dumb play by by Anderson. I love I love Anderson, but it was a dumb fucking play when he had when his foot was uh, shoe was coming off up the line screen. We were hard to take timeout. We had a fucking trap play called and and, and, his, and his fucking shoe comes off. That, is, that ain't that ain't Bob Snelker's fault. We have another fucking trap play and if, and if, if Vinny picks up his fucking feet, he walks in. We got the got fucking to pass of uh, 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 AC out there in the flat. There's a ball thrown in the low. That, that is isn't Snelker's fault. We got right down there. We got we got the second down and, and I don't know what the hell. Two two yards ago, I don't know what 15, 40, whatever the hell it was, and uh, and Irwin uh, uh, she jumps offside. Now uh, these are the things that have been hurting us all along. The little things we're working at them to stop them. We moved the ball good today. We went down there and we didn't get the ball in the end zone. I'm gonna keep going. You love this. He's not done. I think we did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Well, just before you go, Carlos, you had a kicking problem in the past. Just... No, you. Let's cheer one up. Let's cheer one up here before it's done. You know, we he did a sensational fucking job. Kick seven, seven goddamn uh, uh, field goals. He, he can win a game many ways, many ways. But uh, shit, uh, uh, DJ, I, I, I was uh, happy when they kicked the goddamn ball to him. Yeah, last, last week, you know, the Giants crazy ran 65 yards. This time he fumbles the ball. What the hell, what the hell can you do? But you can't, uh, I, uh, all you do is you prepare as thoroughly as you can. The guys play their asses off. Any other questions? Sure to help us. Sure, I talked to John afterwards. I thought it was a tough win for him to lose. It's a big win. Big win. That was a hell of a, ch a great catch by Hassan. We did, the guys didn't give up. A great catch by Hassan. A great, uh, a great uh, 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 field goal by Carlos. Exactly the same exactly the same money. He almost had the ball the previous one. And he went up, and, and by, by great effort, he got the ball. He was hurt. He AC had a uh, groin pull on that one pass, and a quick over there that he caught, and he sort of went down, and he had the splits. It's called the squadron left, squadron right, whichever way. Well, you you lines up squadron fly. Squadron, that was a squadron left, squadron fly. They were going down there. What you're looking for is exactly what happened to that, the tip ball, uh, maybe a penalty, some damn thing. Some damn thing. That same pass. Uh, uh, this game reminds me of, of a, a Cleveland Brown game when we went down to the old Met Center. 
You know, when we threw the ball, century, let he lateral the ball to Teddy Brown. Teddy Brown ran out out of bounds. Made a great play. The next one we hit, we hit uh, Ahmad on the squadron right, put it in and won the uh, division. Three wide receivers. Three wide receivers. Tight end stays in, fullback stays in, three wide receivers. The job just run down there and hopefully they get a tip ball, pass interference, a great play, some something. The guy feel like shit afterwards. What? Yeah, yeah, he felt like he felt like shit afterwards. Everybody booing the shit out of me, but he worked his ass off. And he had no smarter uh, coordinator in football. Fuck, they put his picture up there and the fuckers boo him. Fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I gotta tell you, man, what a what a absolute press conference that is, huh? Oh, yeah, he was, and everybody. There's not a player I know that didn't love Bernsey, right? Because he, he literally that's Bob Schnelker. So he did, he he would he'll die on. He, I mean, on he, at that point in time on that hill for for Bob, and Bob was a brilliant fucking play caller. He really was. They boo him, and Bernsey let him have it. But yeah, that's some, that's some, that's some great Fucker. shit. Oh, he's probably love him. God God bless him, man. I love that. I love that. All right, so that Oklahoma or the Oklahoma State Baylor game, I mean, you 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 see this going down to the wire. Do you think this is that? I do. Yeah, I do because my my question is because Baylor loves to run it and they're good at it, and we know Dave Aranda. And you're going to get the great thing about both these coaches to watch their demeanor on the sidelines. They're never flustered. I mean, Gundy lets his guys coach. Dave Aranda lets his guys. There's something to that. There's a poise about them. And Gundy, this is huge because Gundy's been in these situations in Oklahoma State. I can remember a handful of years ago when Whedon was a quarterback. Remember during the late in the season, they went to Iowa State. He was the front runner of the Heisman Trophy, turned, I think, through three picks, and they had lost that game. And they were pushing towards a possible chance at the national title That's game. Right. That's right. And they got beat. So Mike's had these guys in position, but they're well coached. They will be prepared. It, granted, it'll come down to six or eight plays in a game, man. I love the way the defenses play. It's going to be somebody who screws up and lets a guy run free, or it, 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 it's not going to be. I, I don't see domination either way. I don't know how either team can dominate either both teams' defenses. Do you see any way in the world Michigan does not win this game on Saturday? I mean, you no. Great, I, you, here's the deal. You made a great point on Tuesday. They had their Super Bowl on Saturday. And they have a, you don't have a lot of time to get, you know, you come back down from that high. I mean, I know people say, oh, shit, you're playing for, you know, the right to go to the college football playoff. But you know what? Again, that was their fucking Super Bowl on Saturday. Now they have to get ready to play a game against a much lesser opponent that they should beat and should beat easily. That's not always easy. Other than the rivalry talk over the year where you can talk shit about each other, Ohio State, Michigan, which Ohio State's had that trump card on them, it won't mean a hill of beans if you lose to Iowa. That's right. And it will not. Now, Iowa, they, they don't throw it well. And then, you, they, you know, they, they remember that game at home. They were People were talking. They got a chance to be a playoff team. And then some. it might have been produced. Somebody walks in and kicked their ass in their building. And then they we thought Penn it's State. Purdue. and they, it's, Right, it was Purdue. Right? And I'm like, I don't know. And yet they're 10-2. and two. This is Kirk. Isn't this what they do? Iowa kind of hang around and win 13 to 10, 17 to 16, look ugly doing it. And you're like, well, how did they win? But they rarely beat themselves because they're solid. And, you know, and like we talked about earlier on Tuesday, and you just reiterated, Grant, it is so hard now the great teams find a way to do it. And with Aiden Hutchinson, I think there's so many great freak shot men. Of all the players I saw this year, Hutchinson is first pick worthy. That, that guy's a friggin' a monster. I think that they're deep. One thing about offense, sometimes you can lose focus with defense. I think this defense is good enough to score, and I'm talking about dismantle. The best matchup in, the, in, all, in all of college football right now, period. Now, for fun, it would have been Ohio State's offense against Georgia's defense. But the best old school football fist fight throw in Manila is Georgia and Michigan. Old school, you hit me, I hit you, I, there's not going to be a rematch. I don't want a rematch. That type of rocky fight, if back, if, that's what, if we get that, which we win this game, maybe meaning we, meaning Michigan, not we, if Michigan wins, we're staring right at that, Grant, because to take care of their playoff business, they'll see each other in that final. And they're the two best teams, I think, in America. But 
uh, it would be such a shame to kick ass and you're right to grab that emotion and leave it in all of them. I'm talking about empty in the friggin' bucket against Ohio State. Not like you had a bye week to get your wits about you. They're right back. That can be a good thing because you just you don't have time to enjoy it, or it can be a shooty thing because you're like you're still thinking about those Buckeyes. We finally got them. Jim's got to coach this like he co- and, and prepare like they did against them. If both teams play their best, Michigan's kicking Ohio. I mean Iowa's ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No question. Michigan, if Michigan lets them hang around and we get into the middle of the third quarter, Grant, it's 13 to 10, then it's scary because it also takes this one dumbass play and Iowa wins. I have so much respect for Ferens' team, and but I, I just can't see Michigan. I, I think it's a good uh, – uh, uh, yeah. this game feels like it's 27 to 13 Michigan. I, you know, if you, gave me the, if you say, Sean, you got a 10 grand that you have to bet – it's a it's a ten and a half, right? Michigan's favored by ten and a half. I'd say give me Michigan all day, all day. I'll be disappointed if they don't. Probably a double digit win, but don't let Iowa stick around to the fourth quarter. I'm just telling you, you better do what you did to Ohio State. A couple of days ago, you told us that you really thought that Houston will give Cincinnati a game. Why? Because ten and a half seems like a lot to me. Because what I've seen from Cincinnati, and do I? I think that. If Houston can get a few stops, Houston can score. They, it's the quietest 11 and 1 in the country. Now, I know with confidence and I know who they play, but I can tell you this I'll guarantee to you, Luke Fickle. Yep. Dana's telling his team he can win. Luke Fickle is preparing his team for the most, even like Notre Dame, he's preparing his team for the most brutal game they've faced all year. Because a quarterback's efficient and dual threat, you can throw at Clayton Toon. We know Desmond Ritter. But I guess from the eye test, Grant, watching, and I've probably seen, I've seen a bunch of Cougars games, but I've probably seen, can I say, seven or eight Cincinnati games this year, honest to God, I have. Wow. And at times, they, when they're going fast and playing, it's like, damn, they're really good. But there's times that I look at them and say, well, why are they toying around with this team? What are they waiting on, right? Especially if you're a gambler and you got them winning by 20, right? Yeah. Or 21. So my eye test tells me over the last month that Cincinnati's got to play. If Cincinnati scuffles around, I'm telling you, Houston can beat them. Now, if Cincinnati plays their best football, a 10.5 seems too much to me. It's weird. 10.5 for an 11-1 team, meaning Houston. Dana will have something for them. My concern is can you make Desmond Ritter one-dimensional? Because if he's doing running and throwing and they're hitting that and they're playing fast, but if you see a ball bounce and they don't let him get on the edge in the RPO because they run a lot of it, uh, Gino Gadouli, their offensive coordinator, they'll be attacking. Houston needs a very, very fast start, a fast start. Or they may get boat raised too. But I, I like Cincinnati in the game. But I, I can't grant if you're going to give me you're going to give me ten points, ten and a half points. I'll take it. I'll take that as a gamble. I bet in Houston as a the, the thing. I think Cincinnati can win. But anybody that just kind of blows this one off and say Houston's not showing up, at least from what I've seen, it appears to me they're going to show up. After the college football rankings on Tuesday, something bothered me, and I wanted to get your take on this, that the committee can actually look at a team and in a situation like Notre Dame see that their coach has left and that would maybe affect them getting into the college football playoff. I mean, that doesn't make any fucking sense to me. The games are about the players on the field. The players, if they deserve to go, they should go. I, I just I didn't quite understand that. Maybe I'm reading into this wrong, but that just seemed horseshit to me. Anybody that buys into what they're talking about, that that 13-person committee and the committee yeah. chairman, that you're going to get punished because your coach left? That's bullshit. Fuck that. Of course it is. Can you imagine you're going into this game and you got a chance and you're like, oh, our coach left, the Oklahoma State loses and Cincinnati loses and we're in Notre Dame. I mean, just use that as an example and say, sorry, man, we were going to put you in but only if Brian Kelly was there. What sense does it make? Matter of fact, it should be the other way around. Right. It should be the other way. Yep. Oh, we're in a position that yep. you guys you, you guys are going to have to deal with this without your coach. How are you going to handle it? Don't give me a – listen, I'm not going to watch fucking Brian Kelly on the sidelines when Notre Dame's playing. Exactly I'm not going to watch I, – I, now, I know we get to save him when he's there, and I love Nick, but I ain't going to watch him go up and down the sidelines. I'm watching for his press conferences. Yep. I'm watching players. And so th- that is – I can't even believe they spewed that out of their friggin' mouth. That was blown away. That's horrible. Well, I mean, yep. if you're looking at the same. Oh, so all the work we put in, our coach decides to go get $10 million a year, 
and to another school, and you're going to punish us because our coach left? How do we know that our, our interim coach, or if they sign Marcus Freeman, and given that he coaches in this game, because they said if it's an interim coach, they wouldn't consider him. So if they sign him and make him the full-time head coach, how do we know he's not going to have them so damn ready to play if they're in it? You can't punish them. So you're going to tell me if Cincinnati loses, Oklahoma State loses, because Baylor, Baylor's already got two losses, so they're not getting in. Oklahoma State loses, Cincinnati loses, and Alabama loses. Right. That Notre Dame doesn't get to get in. Because then it would be, if that happens, Georgia's in, Michigan would be in, yep. Notre Dame, and who's sitting in the seven hole? Uh, Ole Miss is uh, eight, Ohio State seven, Notre Dame, who's uh, o- Oklahoma State? It would be Oklahoma State. State. It'd be Taylor. Right. That's if Oklahoma State, Notre Dame, Georgia, and Michigan, if Oklahoma State wins and beats Baylor, if Cincinnati loses to Houston, yep. and if um, because, who's the other? Because Cincinnati, Cincinnati, loses, loses, Cincinnati loses, Oklahoma State wins, Alabama loses, and and uh, the third team. Okay, why do I keep getting tossed up? Georgia's in. If Alabama loses, they're out. They're out. If, if Oklahoma State wins – and Cincinnati loses, and who's in the four? Cincinnati, Michigan, who's three? Alabama's three, and and yeah. right now, Alabama's three, Cincinnati's four. Six, five, and Notre Dame's five. Right. right. So right. five and six. That's my guy. I'm adding too many teams. Yeah, yeah, no, be I understand. Michigan, Oklahoma State, Notre Dame. That would be your four. It, it would be. Now, are they going to tell me that you're going to throw Alabama, or, or are you going to throw – Ohio State back in if you think, well, no, you're going to punish us because Notre Dame's coach left? That's the point I'm making. So if Alabama loses and Baylor loses and Cincinnati loses, it's going to be Notre Dame, Oklahoma State, Michigan, and Georgia. All right, what happens, and this is unlikely, but what happens if Alabama loses to Georgia in a game that goes down to the wire and they lose by a point or a field goal? If Michigan gets upset by Iowa, if Houston upsets Cincinnati – then what happens? Does Alabama okay. would Alabama get in? Michigan, like, if Michigan Alabama, loses, Alabama losing a close one, and and you, loses to Houston, they're out. Okay. Cincinnati out yes. automatically. Okay, but uh, Alabama could Alabama still get in with two losses if Michigan and Cincinnati both lose? I'll tell if you what. Close, if it's if, close, for me, I test. Uh, Ohio State's better. I would put Ohio State. I, I don't see how Alabama, if they get beat by Georgia, I'm even though uh, – think about who, who's Ohio State lost to. Well, they lost to Michigan and they lost to Oregon. And Oregon's 10 and Michigan's 2. Oh, boy, they looked like shit against Michigan. They got manhandled. Uh, they did. They did, but they're awful. And, 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 Alabama's lost to A&M went down to the wire. Right, and what's what's a and, and what's a and M's records? What they got seven wins this year? No, no, no I understand. I'm just I understand. And I, I, I'm, I'm Alabama just, would probably get in because they love Alabama. We're not going to jump all the way down to Ole Miss if that's what you're asking. No, at number I right, I don't think you can jump down to Ole Miss. Alabama beat them by forty points. It'll be if that scenario where Michigan loses, Cincinnati loses, then and and Alabama loses. We would know Georgia and Oklahoma State if they beat Baylor would be in. Notre Dame would, would be in under that scenario. It's a no-brainer. You have to put them in. And whether you like them or not, they, their top 20 wins what been against Wisconsin. They haven't had, been overly impressive schedule-wise this year. And then it would come down to this, Grant. It would come down to Alabama and Ohio State. And you know who else? Now, what if, what if Michigan lost 13-10 to 10? in that scenario you just said? Do you put Ohio State, Alabama, or Michigan in? Do they stay? Does a two team fall to four? The number five team in Oklahoma State jumps to three. The then Oklahoma then you have Oklahoma State, uh, Georgia obviously would stay at one. And I know that scenario: Oklahoma State, Georgia, either Michigan, Ohio State, or Alabama, and then Notre Dame. That's who's in. I, right. I, I, but I don't trust the committee. I don't know what they're thinking. If they're go back to your original point, if they're going to take away the coach and they're going to make that a factor. I think it's, that's embarrassing and, 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 and sickening for the kids. I know the answer to your question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Is Mac Jones ready to go on the road on Monday Night Football to that stadium, that environment? Bill's fans are probably already tailgating up there in fucking Buffalo. 
Love those fans. I know the answer for you is yes. I, to me, when I look at both these teams play right now, New England's a better football team on both sides of the ball. I think New England is clearly a better team. But on the road, Monday Night Football, this is a gigantic game. This, to me, is a more important game for Buffalo because they play in New England in two weeks. Break down this That's game. Right. And, and, the, and, the next, and Grant, the next three weeks, you are 100% correct. The next three weeks, if any, let, let's just say New England went and ran the, won those two and beat the Colts. They are clearly yes. the best team in the AFC. I'm not right now. For me, I think they are the most complete team right now. Yeah, absolutely, I, I haven't seen one thing about Mac Jones. This dude played at Alabama in the biggest game they went for it. He both. I mean, he threw a party on the secondary last year in the biggest game in Cuswell. Getting it right. Matter of fact, he was yawning his way through five touchdowns or six, whatever it was, six right. touchdowns. And I, and the, the indication I get watching him and the way he processes information. I don't. Matter of fact, I think he thrives on it. Now I don't know if they're going to go there and win. You never know because Josh Allen could have one of those games. Eighty thousand. It's going to be eighty percent chance of snow. It's going to be in the twenties. It's going to be friggin' great to watch. Yeah. I've seen no indication in Mac Jones' game that tells me he is going to shrink in Buffalo. So, and I'm going to tell you what Buffalo doesn't run it real well. The Buffalo Bills. They, they, they better, I think there's, and there's that, they were the overwhelming AFC favorite, right? Going into the season. This is, they're going to have to, now it's tough to beat a team twice and go on the road. It'll be tough, but I'm going to tell you right now, but this may be the best team Buffalo's played all year. I agree. I'm, I'm not kidding you. This is, they're, they're really good. I, I, I'll be shocked if I come out of this game and you tell me, and we watch and we say, man, Mac Jones was shitty. No, I, I don't know if it, I don't know if they win, but if they lose, I don't think it's going to be him. It'll it'll be that Josh Allen went nuts, right, and have one of those games which he's capable of. I actually like New England in the game, and I love Buffalo's fans. Final thing for you: uh, I don't really give a shit that uh, baseball's locked out. Wake me up if the season starts. You know, the bottom line is you just had six players sign nine-figure contracts in the last week. You've got billionaires and millionaires. You got a country right now that's fucked up with still the pandemic. You got a lot of people who are dealing with a lot of shit. People do not give a shit about their labor problems. I know it's not an issue now. It's December 2nd. Spring training opens up on February 15th, but they had a seven minute meeting the other day. They can't even agree to sit down there for more than a half hour. Again, baseball, and we always say this, but if they have a lockout that continues into the beginning of the season, they are really cutting their wrist because the fans are going to go, you know what? Fuck you. That's exactly what's going to happen. Oh, they cannot. My gut tells me, first of all, isn't it amazing that grown men and women sitting at a conference table, they've had, they knew this was coming down the pike two years ago. That's right. It's, but I, I liken this to on my show this morning, Graham, my radio show, I said, it's like us, like the procrastinator in school. They know they got the big assignment at the end and your ass will wait till three days before the end to do it. This is what they do. They've had all this time, and then they get and wonder why free agency and you know uh, arbitration, and you want the, the, the free agency and money and a and a floor, and when we're going to be free agents and the age and all that, and control of the player for a longer period of time. And you think, oh, you thought you were going to hash it out in two meetings? Get the fuck out of here! And it's just it's baffling to me. Yep. And egos, uh, you know, yep. uh, egos and pride. Listen, rich billionaires. Don't give – they're rich billionaires for a reason. They don't lose these very often, and they don't give in quick because they don't like losing money. Yet, if it goes into the season, my guess is that spring training is going to be a little delayed, Grant, I would say. I think baseball is starting time. But I am with you 100% that the egos and all this and going back and forth. And I said this on my show, and I, I, and I know we don't have a union for fans, but you know who always gets screwed in this? Yeah, right. Has zero voice. They'll do it all. And they'll come out and say, this is for the fans. We love you guys. And across that meeting, during their negotiations, they don't give two shits about the fans. No, they don't. Well, you know, when they go to their special night on a, on a hey, we got hot dog night, or it's Friday night, Yankees, Red Sox, or, or whoever it is. But during this negotiation, they're not saying, you know what? Uh, hey, maybe we should give a little take on this so we're not late because we don't want the fans. We don't want to lose them. They'll start thinking about that when opening days passed up and they're wondering oh, how to charge for tickets. Yeah. They don't care. The people, the people that get fucked are the little guy, the restaurateur, the bar owners, the parking attendants, the concessions, concessions. the whole time, yes. everything. Those are the people that end up, you know, just like when they moved the All Star Game out of Atlanta and it cost the city over a hundred million dollars. And again, you know, not to move on to a whole different tangent here, but we're talking about predominantly African American businesses. We're talking about, you know, a city that was really hit really hard uh, with 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 the 
uh, domino effect of the pandemic. They were counting on all of that revenue. And you know what? Everything worked out because they got the World Series there and they got three home dates and the, uh, the place was a buzz. But, you know, yeah, it's it's not always- they deserved it. Their team went and won. And, and like, it was really, it's really cool. Huh? I mean, not how it ended, but the, the last one and won it against the Astros, but they did, right? But the people that need the business the most, and I agree with you about the fans, they always get shit on, but the people that really count on that for their livelihood are the ones that get fucked over on these things all the time. Don't you think, think about a bartender, or I'm just using them as an example, who get paid four bucks an hour, but all they get is tips. Tips. And you're thinking, man, come here for this all-star game. They'll make money to cover rent for three weeks, yep. right? Or, or two two months of rent. So I just use them. You're right. The restaurant tours, the, and, and in these stadiums, those people who are concessions, yep. it matters to them. It matter, matter, matter of fact, don't lock them out. Keep them on salary. I know they don't, but you know what I mean? Let them make their money. The tip, whatever it is they make. And some owners may do it. I don't know, but no, they'll, they'll tell you how much they love the fans and care. In those meetings, if they love them that much, we wouldn't be in the situation right now. So, you know what? It'll get solved eventually because they don't like losing money and the players are going to get paid and it'll be fine. But it, it is, it's, it's, it becomes a clusterfuck that, that I lose interest in for a while. Hey, you have a great weekend and break up those fucking red out of Houston Rockets. Four in a row. Oh. Holy smokes. Break them how up. about how about Jay Sean Tate going off last night, right? <laughs> Did Cal Tate in the fourth quarter? Hey, no, hey, look out, Milwaukee Bucks. Look out. <laughs> hey, Phoenix Suns, you ain't got nothing on the fourth street. Houston Rock. It was I'll tell you what though, Grant, it is kind of cool to see them making that change, right? And just to belay one last thing on your point. This is why you don't want to throw, hey, John, come on in, John Wall, come on in there and, and disrupt yeah. this. And they're doing this without Jalen Green, so I'm kind of anxious to see. But great performance last night. And I thought, yeah, 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 fuck you. Okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great f- 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 fucking weekend, all right? You take it easy. Fuck it. He was one of the smartest football guys ever. They, 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 fuckers. <laughs> Have a great one, brother. Hey, enjoy championship week. I'm going to give you a text over the weekend, man. Yeah, I love it. See you. Great. All right, buddy.